Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, today's uh, session. This is actually the first event of, uh, of the conference. And I would now like to introduce um, Alexi, who would, uh, uh, he would have to help me pronounce his last name, but uh, he's going to be the uh, moderator for today. Thank you very much. Alexi, can you turn your, your audio on? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, greeting to all attendees of DigiPro and the Pipeline Conference 2021. My name is Alexi Staraselitz. I know my last name is complicated. Just call me Alexi. Uh, I'm really honored to be uh, the moderator of tonight's first presentation. It's truly a pleasure to be placed in the opening of this conference. And all your company is highly appreciated. I, have, I think we have more than 200 attendees tonight. Thank you, thank you for being with us. Let me introduce our speaker, Alexander Kalujny. Uh, Alexander is an R&D supervisor of Wizard Animation and Indie Animation Studio based in the city of Voronezh, which is in Russia. In his presentation, Alex will cover how Wizard Animation implemented the universal scene description framework, developed their own USD editor, and use it to make an animated feature for Netflix. Uh, there will be a 30 minutes presentation by Alex, and then we'll have 10 minutes for the Q&A session. Feel free to post your questions on Whova and vote for the ones that you like. With that said, I hand over the floor to Alex. Alex, please turn on your mic and video. The time is all yours. Break a leg. Hello. Can you hear me? I'm Alex. Let me show you my screen. So uh, my session is Wizard DC platform in production. I'm working at Wizard Animation. This is an indie animation studio located in Russia. We've been around for 10 years now and our latest project, what we completed on the new UZ pipeline is Secret Magic Control Agency was released on Netflix this April. So to overview about what we're going to talk here. Unfortunately, we can't cover everything we changed in the pipeline in this talk. So I decided to show you only the most interesting parts of our pipeline. I'm going to talk about our in-house user editor and some of our scene assembly, hair and lighting tools. So our previous pipeline, it was based on uh, in-house custom XML scene description with Alembic caches. It was a set centric and the architecture of the system called asset look dev was inspired by a Cortex model procedural presented at 2013 NDT Pro by Image Engine, including what we similarly built hey, and Alex, abstract. Yeah. Are you are you showing um are you sharing your screen? Oh I'm sorry. Oh I yeah. Think. I, I don't think uh, because I'm not seeing anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, but <laughs> okay. Let's I just show you slides. Okay, so I do here. Sorry again. So a text of this system called Asset Look Dev was inspired by Cortex Model Procedural, present at DigiPro 2013 by Image Engine. Could what we similarly built and abstract render interface, what we use for viewport, um, legend preview, and final render translation. We changed the system several times without the artist notice anything, but the architecture and artist workflows started from the age. We used to we used cost DC for the bare minimum but it was still painful to upgrade over the years. So we decided to pay our pipeline technical debt. The system had scalability issues on big scene graphs and the import render technology was not optimized as we would like. So we constantly increased our technical debt in this area. Artists could edit only isolate set objects, complicate scene assembly in if an artist want to do short layer overrides. Meanwhile, unflexible hair pipeline need to be upgraded as well. 
Our artists were frustrated with the current possibilities of the in-house care tools and the difficulties of pushing recovery data into our pipeline. So we decided to move to USD as a possible solution with our send description and viewport problems. We found that majority of uh, tools and DC plugins for support USD editing and uh, our exports suffer from DC USD integration issues. It's understandable because HA2 Mary two completely different send descriptions. These technical issues placed a burden on R&D, TDs, and artists, since that they had to be experts in USD, host DC, and bridging DC plugin implementation nuances. Instead, we thought about ditching host DC interrupt problems and write our own standalone USD editor, then all these bridge issues could be solved much more easily. A new extensible modern application framework based on this idea, which we call Wizard DC Platform, can allow us to build various artifacing tools based on the core USD technology. The idea itself is not new. Previously, standalone USD editing was explored by Emily Fiore, presented at Digital Pro 2019 by MPC. So we decided to not write yet another render delegate and try to make use of Storm. And I think unlike other USD tools, we didn't try to invent the next big thing. Our goal was simply to replace existing DCs for select workflows in our pipeline. Before we start work on next production, Secret Magic Control Agency, we decided to post perfect time frame to roll out USD pipeline. From the start, we decided to try to be as close as possible to industry standards with user interface to make it easier for artists to migrate from any other popular DCs. This DC is written in C++ and by Python and use Qt5 and PySide for UI components. We support Windows and Linux from day one. Similar to Melifiori, to support accessibility, we use USD plug manifest system to discover and register plugins, which we found to be very flexible for our use cases. Also, we try to minimize our patching with USD library because thanks to the community interest of the Zika system, the updates come very frequently and we don't want to increase our technical depth too much. We implemented our extensible commons API where developer can write and execute undoable actions inside Wizard DC app. By design, USD does not have facilities to support renaming, grouping, and reparenting prints while keeping all the relationship in place and resolve name collisions. But this is what art expects from any modern DC by default. To support the artist, we wrote AD commands to keep reconnection for the current AD target layer. Either DC export tools API, which allows extension developer to write interactive artist facing tools. The most popular way of bidding Hyga inside the application is using USD imaging jail class. But this method doesn't allow us to support all the features what we want. So we decide to write our own HD engine. For instance, USD Image GL supports swapping render delegate on the fly, but it can be used only one scene delegate. We extend this to support multiple scene delegates simultaneously bound to the switchable reward context. So let's start with famous kitchen set. Here you can see outliner, our attribute editor, which shows row USD attributes. including arrays. The most important panel is script editor, where you can, can have access to the Pixar USD API. We also have features for TDs like after completion for SDF pass for function inputs. Also support selection, selection of faces, edges, and vertices. Also have ability to see all the SDF layers see the ASCII format data and modify in place. It's very handy for debugging and to experiment as a TD.
Else implemented uh, move, rotate, and scale tools. We try to be as interested standard as possible. We offer X4 and common APIs. Else support various snapping modes, including object surface. Also support selection based on user kind metadata. And you also can to duplicate the frames and note that we result name collisions. You can also can make a group and this work as you would expect. You can also edit pivot from X4 common API, and this also work as you would expect. Also have user looks locators are using our overlay syndicate to visualize various locators. And we can also visualize camera locators. And you can edit use the camera using viewport control. Okay. We decided early on what Wizard DC is going to be a multi stage editing application. The artist can add to the session multiple USD stages and switch the current stage. Here you can see multiple SMCA shots from the actual movie loaded into Wizard DC app. Using the ASA browser, I can switch between stages and look for the shot I want to edit. Visual layer editor, I'm looking for Wagon asset reference and open the asset layer installation to make the edits in more comfortable environment. Use an asset browser, add reference to the coffee cup asset, and place it to on the wagon geometry. Since the parent command, I make the cup geometry inherit wagon transformations. Notice that I didn't save wagon asset as the layer to the disk, and all of these edits are stored in the memory. When we switch to short stage, we can see the wagon view cap asset and the cap and here the wagon short animation. Okay. In some send assembly authoring workflows, the artist found they need to slightly modify point position on the sketch geometry. So we have the tools to directly modify using geometry mesh point position attribute to support this workflow. So here I select the points and move it just like that. Oh, I can also select the faces and using topology information, this also author using a position tribute. I also have support for sub-selection. Let me modify landscape much more smoothly than this. Using Tools API, we also have support for sculpting tools, and Pinovar tools. Paint Instance tool, so I can edit Point Insert Point Cloud data. Also, I can edit instance directly. So this here, you see, I can move the dog. And this actual author uh, points is here 
point cloud data. And also author invisible ID attributes. And move a lot of dogs. Okay. Sometimes artists may require more sophisticated tools for addition geometry when we can provide. So we introduce into process messaging feature what enables us to send any deltas from multiple layers between specified processes using zero MQ library. Here we're featuring Blender don't be developed. Here you can see artists push live share button both in Blender and Wizard EC to enable live share mode. When the artist moves the points in Blender, he can see edits inside Wizard EC app. The same happens in Blender's sculpting mode. I'll support bidirectional edits between two Visual DC processes. This mode supports any type of these edits, so it's very useful for debugging. While we're not looking into hardcore collaborative workflows, this feature can be helpful in remote review sessions or sending live edits to the AutoProts renderer. In some cases, artists found they need to animate USD attributes. USD support is using time sample cache. And usually for previous pipeline interchange, we want to leave all the data to cache with time samples. But the artists may find it cumbersome to define time samples directly. So we developed new extension for Visual DC, which uses AnimeX from Autodesk, animation curves, and artists can offer rich animation curves, preview results in viewport, and back the animation as USD cache. Artists can see animation case on the timeline or edit animation curves standings interactively in the graph edit panel we developed. You can see I insert the keys and I also can manipulate the tangents. So you can enable infinity mode. On SMC, we decided to use UD shade schema to store shading data. We implemented not editor UI to support shading workflows inside Wizard DC app. The artist can offer UD shade graphs directly in the application. And consider what our viewport can switch rendered gates, we get compelling USD shading environment. Here we're featuring HD cycles rendered gate developed by Tangent Animation. You can see I press shading preview button to debug subset of the material network. These tools should work with any compiled render delegate and any easy shade material graph. You just modifying USD data here.
I also can rotate the lights. Okay. Let's move to much more bigger extensions. First is our high system. Based on previous pipeline experience, you want to control the majority of the code for generate final hair curves to safely and deeply integrate into a hair pipeline. The coldest hair system is as wizard generator or WGN for short, because scattering a guide to polish algorithm are highly inspired by XGen from Disney. However, unlike XGen, we decided to use open shading language networks to modify the input parameters because we found that it's much more easier for artists to construct open shading language networks with predefined nodes than modify S here expressions. Embedded into Visual DC using, using custom WGen schema was realized full WGen room graph. We track WGen schema premise for updates and translate them to WGen graph. Geometry inputs are cached using Geom meshes for surfaces and using Geom basis curves for guides. We also written WGN shaped scene delegate what with a live computer hair geometry. Here you can see we create WGN graph from the scratch using WGN outliner, artist UI for to inspect WGN graph. Here you can see we also support OSL code. Editing, so we can modify OSL code on the fly. Of support for adding modifiers and modifier parameters could be as OSL modified as OSL shaded notes too. Okay. Also have higher scalping tools that manipulate USD by scores directly. These edits trigger recompute of WGN graph and that pushes updates to WGN scene delegate. I also want to say what WGN is used for all sets in Secret Magic Control Agency. For SMC crowds, we used USD variants to switch full WGN rake on the fly that you can see on the left in the note editor. This is was very useful for wire source calls. Our second extension is our lighting tool set. Sandleap is a functional programming inspiring graph computation engine. It's the idea that each send graph print is processed separately and lazily on demand. Sandleap is heavily multi-threaded and it's not tied to USD in any way. So Sandleap have concept of locations is its a print representation and functions. What can modify locations or the attributes based on the function arguments. Function tree is a graph of connection functions and scene graph is simply time computation cache. The idea is similar to the graphor presented at Digipro 2016 by Image Engine, where we execute compute graph on each location multiple threads. But unlike graphor, we use this computation architecture only for scene graph processing. We decide to use simply for procedural code, but we need to abstract from a render. So this way, we don't need to write render specific code for each procedural, procedural uh, for each render we decide to support. It was still early days for Hydra for final frame rendering when we evaluated this for SMCA. 
Instead, we decide to write a rendering backend for translates synlib data directly to the renderer. This method allowed us to control all the features we need to support without waiting for Gaijar to mature. We're looking forward to reconsider this decision for future productions. So let's take a look. We, use, uh, we write a USD send lib schema to present a graph similar to animalogic clips present the graph last year. I think it's similar. And we track USD send lib prims updates and translate them to sendlib function tree. We also write a custom syndicate to view sendlib data and wrote custom uh, sendlib UI tools like syngraph on the left, let's inspect the syngraph data and attribute view on the left again, what uh, allows you to in debug sendlib, uh, sendlib attributes. Here you can see I load USD in as external file. And we added a sendlib edit node. Again, here only three nodes are actual usd prims. So we mark location as editable and we can uh, move the location and this encoded as edits to sendlib edit node. We also can add uh, new locations like decent light here. So we have uh, artist-friendly inspector UI that can allow you to modify sendlib locations and translate these to sendlib edit nodes. They can also use Sendlib to make more procedural stuff. Here we create location and they, we use a special Sendlib Lua script node, what allows you to have access to functions API directly and procedural describe Sendlib graph before the render. This way we can write our tools, uh, our TDs can write our tools in some cases when it could be useful here for SMC crowd shot. We need to align our user skeleton assets in the line. So here you can see I edit law script and all these agents are changed. And also edit uh, object count. And expand. Okay. Here we're featuring our experimental send leap to cycles integration example. Here you can see more complex short template in the node editor on the left. Also, you can here see an image view panel that can show you rendered images. We write zero MQ uh, pic driver or uh, send pixels to image view. You can also here see uh, on the top simply specific variable switches what we use for synchronous lighting workloads. We use simply switch nodes, but basically switch the node branches based on variable value. So let's Move to another example. Here we're featuring WGN Sendly plugin, what allows us to write uh, hair generation code once. And when we add support for a new renderer, we'll, we'll go to the system automatically. You can see our the light. Also, thanks, uh, I, 
Thanks to the fact that our application is USD editor, we can switch to reference stage in Sendlib USD node and edit in place in short context without going to any other application. Okay. So for future work, uh, during production of SMCA, many workloads inside with RTC app were very better, which caused much frustration to our artists. So in the future, we want to stabilize and improve artists' experience. These RTC platforms remain an active development, and we're working towards open sourcing this technology. The idea is that it could help reduce maintenance costs and improve software quality in the long term. So we're looking for studios for early feedback, and you can build me a mail and contact me here in Google. Also, we're looking into expand Visual DC usage in other departments. So let's sneak peek for early test what animation and rigging department are pretty excited about. Using Studio House DC agnostic rigging code, we create working rig for SMC character inside Visual DC. Use again a custom scene delegate and track USD for rig controls. We also can reuse uh, Animax extension. And here we added uh, two more, two new widgets, is channel editor and picker. So I'd love to thank our Wizard R&D team who implemented Wizard DC app. Also, we cannot finish this without our Wizard pipeline team who supported infrastructure and various USD glued pipeline tools. Also to thank, like to thank the whole well SMCA crew who fiercely embraced the new USD pipeline under tight deadlines and gave, gave us invaluable feedback. Finally, a great appreciation goes to Pixar's USD Hydra teams who made all this work possible. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Thank you so much for your amazing presentation. It was very comprehensive uh, and it was great to learn more about your product and how you utilized all the opportunities of USD in your pipeline. And according to the vote poll, on Whova, I see that the vast majority of the audience expressed they're interested towards an open source standalone use the editor, such as yours. And there are many questions uh, from the audience. So let's move on to the Q&A part. Uh, okay. Please get ready to, oh, your mic is on. So I will start with the most upvoted question from Craig Barnett. Uh, what was the most challenging part of integrating USD into your tools, Alex? Okay, uh, actually, we don't integrate it uh, using into our tools. We actually uh, write our tools, especially for using workflows. So I think is most challenging part for uh, our work is was, I think it was Sandlip extension because it was quite, uh, it was quite heavy usage of uh, USD. Uh, I we use USD as input uh, for Sendlib, as Sendlib USD node, and use USD as uh, Sendlib node graph. So this is quite complex, and you have actually a send graph, what generates another send graph, what generates another send graph, and it was quite complex to make it stable. And also, we were quite heavy um, looking into uh, make zero copy uh, for all this stuff. So Sendlib would not be much more 
uh, much more heavy weight than the use UG directly. Well, I'm not sure I answered the question, but it was most harder part for us. Okay, good. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, and we have uh, a new question upvoted uh, from Man. What performance and scalability challenges did you run up against? Well, actually, uh, I answered the question. Uh, <laughs> It was Sandlip. Uh, also, I quite like to abuse the fact that we not uh, make uh, NAA animated movies. So we try to not abuse our application because we uh, we try we try to use uh, actually have a very heavy data sets, but uh, we actually have a very cheap hardware for, for artists. So we try to be uh, pretty reasonable here. Uh, but uh, I'd like to say what we, we still have a lot of room for optimizations and what we want to do uh, with this is to uh, make a major pipeline cleanup so we can uh, modify and improve the server when the artist will move to this application. Okay. okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be how many engineers and how long did it take to develop this tool? This is actually a question I would like to ask too. Um, so how many engineers and how much time did it take? Actually, uh, if we talk about use editor, we started it, uh, I think, at 2000 and 18 it was actually at maximum five or six engineers including myself and uh, some of the parts like wgm and syndlib we uh, uh, we actually developed uh, much more earlier like it was uh, started i think it's four years ago and it's actually uh, it, same engineers, uh, same five engineers develop WGM and Synlib too. So it was quite, we have quite tight budget for this. But also I'd like, I'd like to say again, we also have pipeline team. So some of parts for using glue tools or pipeline, uh, actually we have additional people so it's kind of like that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like you did a great job and uh, in a pretty, on a pretty tight budget and uh, in a very short amount of time. Uh, let's move on to the next question from Alan Freckman. Uh, do you have to write any USD file plugins or resolvers or was USD out of the box sufficient for your needs? So basically, uh, did, did you have to write any plugins or resolvers? Okay, actually we didn't write any USD file plugins yet, but we actually use our internal uh, resolver. We call it wizard reference. Uh, we would love to add the word wizard to any software tool. And uh, we use it to uh, our render blocking workflows. So this resolver, this resolver asks uh, microservers for the exact version for each file pass. Uh, also this way we can, uh, it's constructed like URI. So this way we can also share uh, user stages with remote workers because we can change root pass and uh, this way we can uh, make a lot of nice pipeline things without uh, republishing the USD files. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds, sounds like a good answer. And uh, there's another question which was uh, posted a long time ago, actually before the beginning of this session uh, from, it's a question from Anoop AK. 
what are the key metrics to consider while arriving at the buy versus build decision? Okay, this is quite a complex question. And I don't think I can answer it in full, but uh, I I'd like to uh, uh, say about two metrics I think of. Uh, first of all, you need to consider uh, your environment. Basically, what studio you're working on? Uh, is it big studio? Is medium-sized studio? And then all this small shop? Also, uh, you need to consider the country you're working on. Uh, the economic situation in Russia is quite different with, if we compare it with USDA Canada. So uh, sometimes uh, you can buy and sometimes you need to write because uh, software lessons could be uh, quite uh, expensive. Uh, but also you need to consider what uh, also love to talk about is uh, often is quite easier to change the software when they change the people mindset. So if you have a pretty awesome tool and expensive, but very high steep learning curve, uh, and you then have a very expensive artist, uh, you, you have a very big problem. So you need to consider, consider all of this. But for us, uh, we, we, you need to, know, uh, to think about how uh, do you need to invest your time or money in the building uh, the new software. But we knew what we, not, not anyone going to build uh, this kind of software uh, in the next few years. So we kind of invested our time for this. I hope it would be interesting for other people. For sure, that's for sure. And th that was definitely a, a tough question to answer. And uh, maybe you can, uh, um, it's time to wrap up uh, and you can answer this and okay. other questions on chat. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, other attendees can reach out to Alex directly if they have more questions. But I, with that said, I wanna thank the audience for all the questions they asked. And unfortunately the schedule doesn't allow us to answer all of them. But we did our best. Alex, you were great. Great presentation, great product. Uh, I, there's definitely a huge interest towards it. Uh, thank you, everyone. And have a wonderful time. And have thank a you. great rest of the conference. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.